I'm Rabbi Daniel Lapp, and thanks for being with us. And thank you also for sending in your fascinating questions to my website. Here's a good one. In the Bible, genealogies are stated mostly in terms of fathers and sons. Yet in speaking to contemporary Jews, I'm told that the determination of whether one is a Jew or not depends upon the mother's lineage and faith. Is that the biblical standard or was that changed over time? And this is from Christopher. Christopher, thank you so much. Great question. And uh, yes, here's the way to start, I think. Um, it's not only me that calls Hebrew the Lord's language, but even that great Christian leader and arrival in uh, the Plymouth Colony on the Mayflower, the second governor of the Plymouth Colony, Sir William Bradford, who also called Hebrew the Lord's language. And one of the reasons for that is that words convey meaning intrinsically of themselves. Let me give you an example. In English, we can speak about a parent or two parents. We can speak about a single parent or a group of parents, but not in Hebrew. In the Lord's language, the word for parent only exists in a plural, horim. That means parents, stating very explicitly that a child needs to be raised by parents, not a parent, a mother and a father. Now, that doesn't mean that tragically there are not circumstances where a single woman is raising a child or a single man is raising a child, but at least by recognizing that the biblical ideal is a husband and a wife, a mother and a father, because parenting is by nature a two-person job. It can't be done adequately by only one person. And so at least when we know that, we can help single fathers or single mothers parent their child by bringing in resources from the community to help. But the ideal is mother and father. And this is also conveyed by the fact that the child's identity comes from both the mother and the father. First of all, the child's religious identity comes from the mother. And you're right, that is biblical. It's not a recent development. The, the child's Jewish identity either comes from being a convert, let's say a person can convert to Judaism, but in the context in which you're discussing it, it comes about because my mother is Jewish, therefore I am Jewish. That's how that works. But my family identity, my identity within the tribes of Israel comes from my father. And so I may be from the tribe of Zebulun, but that's because my father was. If somebody is a Levite, it's because his father was from the tribe of Levi. And we convey that idea today in not only in Jewish families, but throughout the Western world, influenced as it was by the Bible, in the fact that families take the family name of the father. That's where this comes from. And so a child's identity comes both mother and father in its completion because we have identities nationally and broader, we also have identities locally with our families. And that's why when we think of ourselves, we all think of ourselves as being part of the group of men or women, part of the group of Christians or, uh, or Jews or, or whatever. Or we think of ourselves as being part of the group of uh, law enforcement professionals. We have professional identities. Uh, we are part of the group of homeschooling mothers. We have many different forms of identity. And so it is in identifying oneself as a Jew. We have the mother providing some of the identity. We have the father providing some of the identity as well because both are necessary. And when a society tries to pretend that any kind of arrangement works just fine, you don't have to think of a mother and a father and children. They're making a mistake which ends up with causing damage and destruction to the society they're trying to modify. I'm Rabbi Daniel Lappin, and uh, I thank you for being part of this show, and I wish you good times when it comes to your family, your faith, your friendships, and your finances. <laughs>